2019, Eric Imfri conducted a survey of infrastructure investors' benchmarking practices. This is the largest survey ever undertaken of asset owners and managers active in the infrastructure space. With more than 300 respondents, including 130 asset owners, representing 10 trillion US dollars in assets under management, making up 10% of global AUM, the survey is representative of the views of large, sophisticated investors. Four key findings stand out. First, investors mostly use absolute return benchmarks, but less than 10% think they're good enough. Three quarters of equity investors use benchmarks based on the risk-free or inflation rate. More than 90% agree that such benchmarks are not adequate. At least 50% say they're not representative, do not measure risk, and do not allow for asset liability management. Second, current absolute return infrastructure equity benchmarks are not ambitious. Most investors use a spread over real or nominal rate of 400 to 500 basis points. In a low rate environment, this is less than annualized stock market returns. Third, when investors use relative benchmarks, they use fake benchmarks. The preferred relative infrastructure benchmark is a listed infrastructure index, although these have been shown to have a 100% correlation with broad equity indices in academic research. Otherwise, investors use industry peers as a relative benchmark, despite the well-known issues encountered with valuation in private markets. Fourth, with current benchmarking practices, investors in unlisted infrastructure equity cannot understand their risk and define their infrastructure investment strategies. Most investors say that they use the same benchmarks for their asset allocation, performance monitoring, and risk management, even though these benchmarks cannot be used to identify systematic rewarded risks, monitor adjusted performance, or set risk budgets. Without adequate benchmarks, investment in infrastructure cannot grow to become the fully-fledged asset class it deserves to be. Like other asset classes before, it must first evolve from an opaque, ill-documented investment proposition to become standardized, well understood and comparable with other asset classes.